Hey guys, it's James Baldwin coming to you through the official Overtake YouTube channel. And once again, I'm going to bring you a video. This time we're doing a hardware review. Lots of people seek the feeling of being fully immersed when starting off with sim racing. Games like Assetto Corsa, iRacing pave the way for many possibilities to gain that extra bit of feeling when you're on the track. Today we're going to have a little look at what hardware options are available to boost your almost real world racing experience. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Overtake channel and hit the bell to be notified whenever a video is uploaded. We'll start off with a fundamental thing. To feel like you're in a real race car, you have to first own a rig, or at least something that goes in this direction. Building that environment for your racing adventures is a pricey thing and can take a long time. So let's start with the first thing we need to do to assemble a rig. Choosing the right seat for you is very important. Your manufacturer of choice might differ depending on whether you want to mimic a formula position or a GT position. The very sturdy and robust Placey products, like the Placey Ultimate for example, are best used for formula driving. The seat keeps you steady and secure, even in hectic situations where there's a lot of force going through the rig. If there's a lot of force feedback going through the wheel, it's going to transmit through you into the rig. So it's very important it's sturdy, which it is, uh, but it is around €2,500, so it's not cheap. There are other options for F1 type seats like the FGT or the FGT Lite of Next Level Racing. These are on the more affordable end of the scale, around €499 Euros for the standard one, €299 Euros for the Lite model. For GT racing, the SimLab products fit very well. The much more upward nature of the seat allows for a more realistic feeling if you prefer racing titles like ACC. You can get started with the GT1 Evo for around €330, Euros, which will offer you a customizable and expandable rig. Of course, there are plenty of other seats that are suitable for sim racing. My advice is choose what's most comfortable for you. Wheel bases play a big part in how immersive sim racing can be. For our next step, we'll take a look at which wheel and pedals are best suited for your realistic driving experience. I personally think wheels with a direct drive system are the best fit for sim racing as they provide the best force feedback. However, they cost a fair bit of money, so they might not be affordable to everyone. The best thing you can do is look up all the various different types of wheels and choose them. The T300 from Thrustmaster or the Fanatec CSO Elite are great places to start. If you're looking for maximum immersion, a new set of pedals with load cell brakes might be worth a look. Compared to the cheaper potentiometer based brakes, load cells measure the force that the driver uses when using the brake. The advantage is the accuracy that the brake carries, thus it's better for your immersion. While load cells are a better fit for realism, they can carry a larger price tag. Load cell brakes can start off at an affordable price of around 140 euros with the Fanatec CSL Elite load cell kit, but can go much higher if you opt for the high-end options like Heisingbelt, which can cost upwards of 700 euros. Should you choose race car like pedals with a load cell brake, you may as well start to wear racing boots or shoes because they further increase the realism, as well as the fact you wouldn't step into a race car in socks. And so if you want to go full sweat mode and be a proper, proper tryhard, then you can get yourself a pair of sim racing gloves. Even real life gloves are do, to be fair. I wear them, they protect your hands a little bit. Uh, the main reason I wear them is to stop the sweat getting onto my wheel, which is kind of disgusting. But uh, I suppose, you know, you look kind of cool wearing them. Maybe the most important part of immersion is the visual aspect. Seeing things like your surroundings and getting a good look at how the car's interior looks goes a long way within sim racing. There are a couple of great ways to enhance your driving experience to the point of it feeling fairly realistic. So let's take a look at our third step to finish your ultimate sim racing rig. I personally use an Oculus Rift headset and drive an Assetto Corsa Competizione to prepare for some of my real life races. This can be a real challenge, but it's also very rewarding. In games like ACC or iRacing, there is technology in place that synergizes very well with VR headsets and thus makes it enjoyable to race with them. The technology sucks you into the action and you have a perfect all-round vision of what you're doing and can hit breaking points more consistently. As mentioned, the Oculus Rift for around 490 euros works great for me. Windows Mixed Reality headsets like the HP Reverb can be good alternatives that are roughly in the same price category. If you want cheaper starting prices, the Oculus Quest 2, the Lenovo Explorer, they're all viable options. The Quest to cost from 299 to 399 euros depending on the storage. The Lenovo Explorer is priced at around 370 euros. If you don't like the feeling of wearing a VR headset, a triple screen setup is your next best option. As you've probably seen lots of times, triple screen setups kind of wrap around the driver and create a largely continuous viewing experience for them. Triple screen is further down on the immersion scale, but certainly the next best thing if you suffer from motion sickness or just like the freedom of not wearing a VR headset. But there is one more way to feel immersed even with just one monitor. An ultra-wide curved monitor can provide its own form of realism for the driver. 
The shape and size are often optimal for those who take issue with the gaps between three separate screens. When racing casually, I use the ultra-wide monitor as well because it provides the optimal middle ground between realism and utility. Also important is the resolution and refresh rate that these monitors provide. Now, most monitors either have a 1080p or 1440p resolution and the refresh rate can vary from 60Hz to 144Hz. Ideally, what you'd want is a 1440p monitor with a 144Hz refresh rate. This is very graphically intensive though and it will require a lot of GPU power. Good options here come by the way of Samsung or LG for example, although again, there's dozens of manufacturers so you'll have to see what is the best option for you. While ultra-wide monitors are neat, they're the least immersive of the three options. So that's because the overall range is less than VR and triple screens. So if I had to rank the three I've mentioned, it'd be first VR, second triple screen, and then third, the ultra-wide monitor. Immersion in sim racing is now easily obtainable thanks to the advanced technology that has started to flood into the market. Games like iRacing and ACC provide excellent grounds for a lifelike racing experience, but the heart and soul of immersion is in the hardware. If you go with a good combination of seat, direct drive wheel, better pedals with a load cell brake, and adequate visual assets, you'll feel more like a real racer than you ever have before. The visual aspect is especially important. If you're looking for full immersion, a VR headset is an investment that pays dividends. I can testify that it comes as close as possible to a real life race. Of course, a lot of these things cost a sizable amount of money. If you go for the state of the art equipment, of course, it's gonna cost a lot, but there are plenty of comparable manufacturers who offer a good product that are worth their money. Nevertheless, it will still cost you a few quid so you should prioritize what you want and need the most there's no right or wrong here but if you had to make an order you should start with the pedals then the wheelbase then the rig then the monitor or a vr headset and lastly the accessories like the gloves and boots make sure to look for cheaper alternatives if your budget's smaller examples like the fanatec load cell brakes the f1 type seats like the fgt or the fgt light or wheelbases from thrustmaster can be a game changer on their own and will save you a fair bit of money but anyway, I hope you've learned something today. Don't forget to like the video and sub to the channel, of course. My name is James Baldwin, and I'll see you all very soon.